This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Okay, it's Thursday, and as has become the custom in recent weeks, um, I've been doing a bunch of videos about uh, what options are available if you're in the market for a particular type of guitar. Uh, we've done so far a bunch of them. We've done Les Pauls, Telecasters, Stratocasters, Super Strats, and last week it was the turn of the hollow body jazz rockabilly box kind of thing. And this week we're looking at resonator style guitars. So without further ado, here is the lineup. Okay, I was expecting Harley Benton to be steaming in with the uh, cheapest guitar in the lineup, as they usually do, but not today. This is a fantastically priced instrument courtesy of gear for music a uk based mainly online i think uh music retailer who do their own branded guitars and this is their round neck resonator guitar in sunburst let's have a closer look at it it certainly looks the part doesn't it um a few more shots there we go now at 140 quid even if you're just buying something to hang on the wall and look cool i mean you know you can almost stretch to that but um i've not played this guitar i've not played any of their resonator guitars but let me tell you a little bit about uh gear for music's instruments uh, that i have played i've played their les paul copies their strat copies and their telecaster copies and you know when you pick up a budget instrument and you think no way this feels like something that costs six seven times as much as this well gear for music instruments aren't like that um you can tell you're playing a budget instrument but they are still perfectly serviceable um and i'm kind of thinking you know for this style of guitar uh if the frets are a bit lumpy or the action's a bit high does it really matter you're probably going to be using it for slide anyway let's have a look at the specs that we get here so we get a laminate spruce body um or laminate spruce top rather laminate sapelli back and sides uh you get a spider type bridge more in that in more on that in a moment um Oku, okuyume neck i'm not sure if that's the um the correct pronunciation please correct me if i'm wrong i'm sure you will and 20 frets uh 43 millimeter nut width and um you know well you can read the specs there for yourself um now back to this spider bridge uh, affair basically for resonator guitars there are essentially two types of bridge uh, you get spider bridges and biscuit bridges and i just want to give a bit of a shout out here to a fantastic website where which informed me massively on this uh, acousticfingerstyle.com i've left a link to it in the description now basically um in you can read up on that website uh, what the actual physical differences are between these two types of bridges but essentially biscuit style bridges have a stronger fundamental tone a purer note if you like with less overtones and spider bridges have more of a, a nasal tone that is favored by bluegrass players um you know so i mean for this kind of money 140 quid i didn't dream that you'd get th this kind of guitar for you know anywhere near this sort of price it's it's kind of a no-brainer really isn't it um it's almost not worth not getting one so let's move on to the next one in the lineup this is the recording king double r36 round neck and let's have a closer look at it again we've got a resonator guitar here there are a couple of metal bodied ones on the list and we'll come to those shortly um again very very attractive looking guitar let's take a look at the specs uh once again it's a round neck so that's something to watch out for if you're in the market for one of these uh you get essentially two types of neck on these guitars you get round necks which are essentially like a a regular guitar neck and square necks which are just a slab of wood and those are the types of uh, instrument that you are going to be sat across your lap and playing it like a lap steel once again we get the spider bridge mahogany body mahogany neck paduke fingerboard and um yeah well 
it's it is what it is isn't it it's um a very very attractive looking guitar and let's just have a look at a few more pictures there we go um recording king not a brand i've ever heard of i've got to admit uh it's certainly got that kind of uh, that vintage look going on and for a shade under 300 quid it's still a very very cheap guitar now the next one in the lineup is one that was a real eye opener for me uh take a look at that brand name yes it's a dobro now for people like me who are not exactly uh, resonate the guitar aficionados um it's like uh fender and gibson isn't it you got the national brand and you got the dobro brand and I just assumed that anything with either of those two brand names on it would be, you know, kind of sky high prices. I don't know what the ins and outs of it are. I don't know where these guitars are made, but I do know that it is, you know, an iconic brand for this style of instrument. Let's take a closer look at it. This is a genuine Dobro for £369. It's out of stock at the moment. <laughs> I'm not surprised, but it is available to order. Let's take a look at the specs and what we get here we get um dobro body style uh maple body uh grover tuning keys um everything that's important on here is as you can see branded as dobro one dobro once again you get a spider uh bridge and um what else can we say it's uh, 25 and a half inch scale length 19 frets it's it's going to get the job done isn't it and as i say you know if the brand and the brand attributes and you know the whole kind of heritage that the name brings with it is a consideration for you then dearie me that is i think um just gobsmackingly good value let's move on to something now that's a little bit more shall we say brothers in arms here we go um this is one of the only two um, metal-bodied uh, resonator guitars on the list today. This is um, not a Harley Benton. It is the other um, standard bearer for good quality uh, budget guitars. Vintage uh, probably had Trev Wilkinson's uh, fairy dust sprinkled all over this. Let's take a look at what we get here. It's a bell brass body, bell brass top, bell brass back bell brass side it's made from bell brass i think we can say uh rosewood fretboard and this is a biscuit style bridge and um in case you can't be bothered going to uh, acousticfingerstyle.com i highly recommend you do the biscuit is just a piece of hardwood that transfers the vibration of the strings into the speaker cone you get a mahogany neck um no mention of um whether or not they are wilkinson uh tuners on here uh i would have thought they would have been because most vintage branded stuff has trev wilkinson's uh handwriting all over it but it doesn't say so here so who knows um so there you go that is the uh, vintage guitar how much does this one cost yeah 579 quid so we're kind of climbing the price ladder a little bit but you know even so i mean that is the iconic look of the uh, resonator guitar isn't it it's it's the one that you kind of think of on the uh, album cover of brothers in arms amongst other things and speaking of brothers in arms this is the final one in the list today this is the lottery win guitar the money no object um purchase the family heirloom that's going to get passed down the generations the national resophonic style or uh, resonator guitar and i might be wrong but um i think this might be either a replica of the uh, guitar that was on you know mark Knopfler's guitar on the cover of that album or it might be um you know just that might have been the model he had and this is one of their stock designs i don't know you would you would think if it was going to be um a mark Knopfler signature model or something like that it would be uh labeled as such but i've been um i saw a documentary on uh, mark Knopfler and his guitars recently and uh from memory the uh the, the engraving and stuff the 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 graphics on this guitar look remarkably similar to the one that i remember on that documentary uh beautiful looking thing and uh doesn't that just look gorgeous isn't it fantastic again you know fantastic stuff so what do we get we get a nickel plated brass body a handmade resonator and um 
uh, Maple Biscuit Bridge once again, Bone Nut. You're getting all the stops pulled out here. You know, nothing is made from plastic when it could be made from uh, bone or, you know, something uh, high end like that. Um, and it is, it's going to sound fantastic. We know that, don't we? I mean, just listen to, as I say, any of the uh, recordings that Mark did with his. 3,300 quid, all but. Um, but as I say, it's going to be one of those things that is more than just a musical instrument. It is, you know, going to be a treasured heirloom. And, you know, it's going to... You can never really say, can you, that a guitar is going to increase in value. But if, if anyone is likely to, if any guitar is going to, you know, kind of become collectible in future, then perhaps this might be uh, fitting into that category. So there you go. We have right from the uh, cheapest of the bunch, 139 quid, uh, entry level kind of first rung on the ladder kind of uh, uh, gear for music guitar. I meant to mention as well here uh, when we were looking at this, I mean, just look at the reviews it's getting. You know, nothing there below five stars. And uh, I've dealt with gear for music myself a couple of times in the past and I've always found their... Um, customer service to be absolutely fantastic so you know as i say their branded instruments are a little bit you know you can feel that they are budget instruments built down to a price but you know for that kind of money i don't think you can really complain then we had the recording king uh one which is you know just just under 300 quid then the genuine dobro the surprise of the day for me that one um and then the vintage one there we go that is as i say probably the cheapest you're going to get on the actual um you know kind of metallic uh resonator guitar kind of ladder there with that one uh, all all the cheaper ones tend to be wooden bodied guitars and then you know as i say the heirloom the lottery win guitar rounding things off and there you have it so there you have it. Those are just a few of the options that as I was scrolling through websites and browsing uh, the, the interweb, uh, the, just a few of the guitars that made me kind of go, oh, that's worth a second look. Uh, which one would I have? Well, um... I'm torn, really. On the one hand, you know, I never thought you could get something with the Dobro brand on it for that kind of price. And, you know, it is an iconic brand for this type of instrument. Um, so that would be tempting. But as I suspect is the case for many people, uh, because this isn't ever going to be my main reach for everyday kind of guitar, um, I would go for the cheapest option. That gear for music thing is just astounding value, I think, that for that kind of money. Look at the reviews it got as well well um as i say you're never going to pick up a gear for music branded guitar and think that you're playing something that's worth seven or eight times the price you, you're just not uh you're probably going to have to do a bit of setup work on it but you know as i said in the clip you know if you've got lumpy frets and a high action it doesn't really matter so much if all you're doing is gliding the slide along the strings and not really um you know encountering the frets you'll probably given my experience have to do a little sort out a little bit of fret sprout you know the kind of frets sharp fret ends poking out the side of the neck uh that's been you know a, a thing on pretty much every gear for music guitar i've i've ever tried but it's 140 quid it's it's easy enough to sort out and um you don't mind having to sort it out on a guitar that costs that much it becomes a bit annoying when you have to sort that kind of thing out on an eight or nine hundred pound guitar which has been the case in uh, once or twice in my experience but you know for that kind of money i'm happy to take on that kind of work so there you go folks that is uh, the video for today hope you found it useful informative and if you have please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not give me a like while you're at it if you want to support the channel all the links are in the description box below thank you in advance if you're thinking of doing that and thank you very much indeed if you're already doing it much appreciated and don't forget the live stream 5 p.m tomorrow friday 5 p.m uk time the live stream we just sit around and have a beer and a chat and it's a great way of kicking off the weekend love to see many of you there so until then i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you for watching thank you for your time stay well folks stay safe and above all, stay sane. Bye for now.